I see my name in shiny lights, yeah. A different city every night. Oh, I, I swear the world better prepare for when I'm a billionaire. It's time to get down to business on the weekend's number one business program. Known as the king of networking, your host, Shalom Klein, has worked with thousands of entrepreneurs and created countless jobs. So, to success, let's get down to business. And indeed, we're all about small business, jobs, and entrepreneurship, and business we talk a lot about business here. You're on with Get Down to Business, and I'm your host, Shalom Klein. And remember, you can always download podcasts from Get Down to Business on my website at shalomklein.com. And while you are there, don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Shalom Klein. It's going to be a jam-packed week of content and information you will not want to miss, so let's jump right in. I'm very excited and thrilled and honored to be joined by Mike Sullivan, the president and CEO of Loomis, the country's leading challenger brand advertising agency for more than 30 years. He's helped some of the country's most successful companies build their brands, and he's the co-author of The Voice of the Underdog, How Challenger Brands Create Distinction by thinking culture first. First of all, Mike, welcome to the program. Well, thank you. So happy to be here. Absolutely. So I always love to get to know the person behind the microphone and the person behind the book as well. Um, I'm, I'm curious, let's, uh, let's dive into why you got into this uh, line of work and what is it about challenger branding that gets you excited every morning to get going? Well, you know, it's interesting why I got into this this line of work. I think it's it's what I've always wanted to do. My dad was in this business and uh, kind of followed in his footsteps. And, uh, you know, I've, I've started it at the large ad agencies uh, working with, uh, gosh, you know, Fortune 500 clients that, you know, you would know the brands and you would know the names. And while those are a lot of fun to work on, we all enjoy, you know, having big budgets and, and uh, vast resources and all that good stuff. It, it turns out that challenger brands, the brands that are not number one in the marketplace, really uh, stimulate sort of my interest in creativity and, and really um, uh, just sort of light me up and all, all of my peers here at the agency. So that w- that's what we have decided to really focus on. And that's what we make a living out of uh, here at the Loomis Agency. So that indeed is your focus, challenger branding, and your, your agency is indeed focused on this. So how, what's the difference? How do you approach challenger brand differently and say a category leader? Well, it's a great question. So, you know, the, the first and foremost, challenger brands obviously don't have the resources of, of category leaders. You know, we think in terms of category leaders like, a, I don't know, McDonald's or a Coca-Cola, and they have just an embarrassment of riches when it comes to uh, marketing and distribution and sales and all that good stuff. Um, from a challenger brand perspective, you know, we, we can't spend our way to success. So we like to say we've got to outthink, not outspend the competition. Um, resources are limited, and so we can't replicate the strategies of the the market leaders. And it turns out we don't want to do that anyway. Uh, Challenger brands, you know, you think about a brand like, uh, oh gosh, I don't know, Red Bull, for example, since I talked about Coca-Cola. They didn't sneak up on the market uh, with a big advertising budget and advertise their way to success. They found a niche market and they really became important to that niche market. And then they started to uh, sort of cascade out from there. So they took their place among um, uh, action sports enthusiasts, which nobody was paying attention to at the time, developed a real allegiance around that, that, that core audience, and then started to iterate and snuck up on a category and, and created a, a really a subcategory uh, all to its own, the energy uh, drink subcategory and Red Bull came to really dominate that. And then, of course, you, you know, you see followers like uh, Monster jump in and, you know, they behave like challengers themselves and, and really rewrote the rules uh, according to their own playbook so that they could win. And so, as you can see, there's just a lot of energy and interest around that. You can't go and replicate the, the strategies of leaders. You've got to create your own when you're a challenger brand. I'm chatting with Mike Selvin, presidency of Loomis, the country's leading challenger brand advertising agency. And together with his co-author, uh, Michael Tuggle, um, they wrote uh, The Voice of the Underdog, How Challenger Brands Create Distinction by Thinking Culture First, um, which is fascinating. I read an article on rising advantages to being an underdog. It's interesting. You've name dropped a couple of interesting organizations. So I have to ask, what would you say if one of those brands that you just mentioned, Coca-Cola, Apple, you know, would pick up the phone and say, you know, uh, Mike, you're, you're, really, uh, you're really good at what you're doing. Can we, uh, can we hire you? What would your response be? 
That that is another very good question, and, and I've been asked that before. Um, well, the, the truth is, you know, there are, are so many agencies out here in the in the world that um, it's it's an awfully competitive uh, sort of field and business to be in. The, the odds of that happening are, are pretty low. If they did call, um, I, I think where we would um, uh, what we would talk about is lining up with a particular product inside of their brands that is going to behave like a challenger brand. So obviously, Coca Cola comes to market with all sorts of brands. Um, many of them are startup uh, in nature. And that's where we would fit. We would plug in and play uh, uh, from a, a challenger branding perspective. We, we would not be, uh, the Loomis agency would not be the right agency to be the lead agency for a company like Coca-Cola or General Motors or insert other category leader here. It's just not what we're set up to do. And so, you know, I would, you know, frankly, I would, I would move away from from a business like that. Uh, we're not equipped for it and, and we're not uh, oriented uh, towards it. And I think that brings up another really good point. Challenger brands really need to be very clear about who they are for and who they are not for. Uh, this idea of being all things to uh, all people um, is really a, it's a trap that a lot of entrepreneurs found, uh, uh, fall into. Uh, and it's very tempting, you know, when somebody comes and dangles a big piece of red meat in front of you, like a, a, a giant account, uh, to want to move off that, but you do it at your own peril. Um, your, your, your customers come to define you uh, based on what they understand about you. And if that's constantly moving around and shifting, um, it, it makes it very difficult for your, your audience to stay with you. And so um, my, my guidance to any challenger brand uh, company, any agency is to kind of stick to your knitting, really get focused on what you do, do that very well, uh, and don't deviate. Mike, uh, that's, that's really good advice, not just on challenger brands, but for uh, entrepreneurs and small business owners in general, uh, to stay focused and do what you do best. Um, so that's, that's really, really great. So let's talk about the people within your agency, the people that you hire. It's a certain personality, isn't it? You know, people that are very focused on, on representing the underdog. Tell us a little bit about that and why they're attracted to your organization. Yeah, the, the, it is really a very different uh, professional, if you will. So when I was when I was younger, working at uh, much larger agencies, you know, you, you find professionals who very much identify themselves with the big, you know, uh, brand A, if you will. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's a, there's a lot right with that. But what I like to look for um, in in folks that we bring into the Loomis agency is for somebody who's got a real heart for the marketing problem, helping clients get in there you know, kind of get gritty, get down to it, roll up your sleeves and solve the marketing problem and do it without throwing money at it. That's, that's the, that's the big difference uh, when you're working with challenger brands is the, the, you can't press the easy button and go, Oh, well, I just need another million or 10 million bucks. And let's just throw that at the problem. You've really got to be, uh, you've got to have a head for really thinking through the problem. And by and large, those are the folks who show up uh, at the agency. The other thing that I would say about our agency, and this is, you know, the, the subtitle to the book is how challenger brands create distinction by thinking culture first. Culture is so critically important to the performance of challenger brands, really any brand, but especially challenger brands. Um, and we've worked really hard as an organization to cultivate our own culture. What I would say to other challenger brands is, while, while, while you're young, think very deliberately about the kind of culture that you're creating. Does it support what you represent as a brand. Those two things need to be congruent. We talk a lot about that in the book, the idea of culture, which informs behavior uh, on the part of employees and everybody inside the organization, and then brand, which is what people think it's like to do business with you. In fact, I'll put those two things together real quick. A brand is what people think it's like to do business with you. And so that means you need to really think deliberately about the kind of people who are representing the brand? You know, what sort of behaviors do you want to inform uh, with your culture? And that's something that we we put a lot of thought into as an organization. I like to say we sort of glow in the dark around challenger brands, and that that turns out to be awfully attractive to folks who who share our interest in our mission and helping challenger brands win in the marketplace. Sure. Well, lots of reasons to get in touch with uh, Mike Sullivan over here from the Loomis Agency. Um, both uh, as uh, businesses as well as, uh, you know, people that want to be that change, uh, which is awesome. So, Mike, we're just about out of time, and I know everybody will want to pick up a copy of your book and get in touch with you to continue the conversation and learn more. Um, so how can we do that both on the book as well as the agency? 
Well, the book is out there on Amazon, which I think everybody knows about, The Voice of the Underdog, How Challenger Brands Create Distinction by Thinking Culture First. And then, of course, if they want to reach out to me, they can get a hold of me through our website at uh, uh, theloomisagency.com. That's theloomisagency.com. Well, Mike Sullivan, thank you so much for joining us here on Get Down to Business, sharing uh, your uh, really fascinating insight on uh, challenger branding. And of course, again, I encourage all of our listeners to pick up a copy of this fantastic read. It's called The Voice of the Underdog, How Challenger Brands Create Distinction by Th- by Thinking Culture. First came out uh, just a couple of years ago and is more relevant now than ever. Um, you can always get on my website, shalomkline.com. We link to all of our guests and all of our uh, fa- fascinating uh, subject matter experts. So you get on my website, shalomkline.com. And of course, get on your favorite podcast app, uh, Google, Apple, wherever our podcast on, subscribe, rate, review, and share, and get down to business. The show all about small business jobs and entrepreneurship. And speaking of those topics, we've got a lot more in store for you on this program. So don't touch that dial. We will be right back on a show all about small business jobs and entrepreneurship. <laughs> 